we discovered a problem with uh, Dylan's left ear. In his middle ear, he seems to have a growth of tissue which appears to have uh, caused his hearing to have deteriorated further. Mm. The plan for his uh, surgery has to change. Mm. Pretty much just surgery to remove this uh, distinct mass of tissue. Right. Okay. okay. End of 2016. Mm. From then, right, do you feel that there's any change in your hearing? I do feel that in generally in normal situations, I'm not able to hear as much. If my hearing gets worse, and there's certain things that I used to be able to hear or do with music that now I'm not able to, then it affects me. My biggest challenge will be trying to assimilate into social setting. It's hard to make friends. It is difficult for her to find very close friends, uh, let alone a soulmate. One of our members was turning to a song at an event, and you look quite fun. My project is about sort of how the hearing world sees deafness and, uh, and sees sort of how deaf people connect with music and dance. I'm asking for hearing people who don't know anything about the deaf community. community. Deaf Nation about 10 years ago, at that time, actually from our interaction with the deaf community, we recognised that there's very few platforms for them to learn and be exposed to dance training. In finding a group identity, you are also able to discover yourself and understand yourself better, and then in turn, find your own identity. There are people who tend to trust, people who die. So in the community, I find that a lot of people draw line. So for example, there is a group that have a very strong identity and a very strong pride for their deaf culture and identity. I move, move, move. That was the... Oh, different now. Yeah. I thought I'd stand come by you. Yeah. That's okay, I'll do a bad with me. Okay. Rosen is one of the members in Redev that has grown and bloomed the most, I feel. Yeah, I remember the first few years she was with us, she was really very quiet and shy. But along the years, she opened up and then she's more willing to form her own opinion about things and make decisions and give suggestions in the things that we do or how the club is run. Her development and her personality also shows in the way she dances. This is my idea for MV mm. with you. 
for me that see who the main character identify the main girl I think it up doing the slow motion so Nick will be jump jump there and the back you will be darting no only one of one of you Dylan, yeah. another two more weeks. You're gonna see Dr. Barry, you know. No. And yeah, Dr. Barry is gonna help you. Remember what's inside your your ear? Is oh. it the left ear or your right ear? Left ear. Yeah. Is that your left ear? Yes. What's inside your left ear? A ball. A ball. A ball. Oh no. Is somebody going to help you take out the ball? Uh, yeah. Where will we go? Hospital. Hospital. You will yeah. rest with Papa. Papa will be at home with you for 10 days. Yeah. Don't need to be scared, okay? You fly to the hospital. This is going to be the first major surgery in my family. I definitely feel a bit scared, a bit apprehensive with any surgery, there are risks involved. But we just have to trust in God and what he has planned. We also trust Dr. Barry and his skills and we hope that it will just be a positive outcome. Sit on the horse? Yeah. Yes? Yeah. Let me go here. Okay, let's go and sit on the horse. Let's go inside your Xavier is seven years old this year. At birth, he was diagnosed with bilateral hearing loss. Both ears are severe to profound hearing loss. Yeah, so three months ago, we decided to go ahead with the cochlear implant. Feedback from the teachers as well as a hearing test that showed that his hearing might have deteriorated slightly. And so to ease his learning journey, we decided to go ahead with this cochlear implant. I was sad. Why does this have to be done to him, you know? And at such a young age of seven years old, and he has to go through this process. A cochlear implant operation is fairly straightforward operation, which will usually take approximately two hours under general anesthesia. The incision is a very simple four centimeter incision behind the ear. It allows us then to access the underlying bone. Uh, with specialized drills, we are able to then start creating a channel that allows us to get through the airfield space in the skull bone down into the middle ear. Once we're in the middle ear, we are able to then create an opening into the inner ear or the cochlea to insert this particular cochlear implant, which has a long, straight electrode that gets inserted and which will then lie within the substance of the cochlea. It has another portion where the magnet and the device which has the electrical circuitry uh, gets embedded on the bone on the outside. The only communication is a magnetic communication between the external device and the internal device. One of the complications would be damage to the facial nerve, which may potentially lead to paralysis of one side of his face. And there is a special monitor that we set up such that if we are operating close to the nerve that controls his facial movements, the face would start to be activated and sound an alarm to warn us as surgeons to keep away. We have a special computer and this is simply because we want to ensure that the device that we have implanted is working and that the hearing system is receiving the signals and that the entire system is working well.
after age one, we did a full body checkup to make sure that every part of her body is functioning well. We were told that she's profoundly deaf, about 90%. She can't hear at all. The first option was not to have any intervention, meaning that she has to go through special needs school, learn sign languages to communicate. So the other option is what we wanted is to integrate her to the mainstream, meaning that she has to listen, she has to receive sound. Cochlear at that time was quite a new medical technology. She went through the cochlear implant only at two years, two months. He's a little bit apprehensive about P1, so what can you, what can you tell him? Be more mature. I think he should have made enough friends, isn't he? Do you think you can make a lot of friends, okay? Just so, this time to teach us Dong Wen. What do you enjoy in your primary school? Bowling. I went to trouble a few times when I was in P1. Why? Why? So, I didn't know that the swim bag existed. <laughs> so I just want to explore the swim so bag. I just missed the pregnancy and a bit of the first class. Really? Yeah. The surgery cost us almost about 100000 We need to come out about $12,000. But the bulk of it, the 75% of it, are being paid by the subsidies given by the government. I'm very thankful to have a very happy and supporting parents. They always want the best for me. Make sure that I'm growing up well, have sufficient food, and then things that will help me in what I do. Now we're just trying to make the best of what she has. Every five years, the external processor, once they have a new version that came out, a new technology, we will actually purchase it for her so that we can actually maximize on her hearing. The latest one costs us about eight to nine thousand dollars and it's getting more compact and smaller and it's lighter also for her to put on her head. So aesthetically, it's also much better. What about hey, what the so, to sleep? I don't know. What about you? What ice cream did that you want to eat? Yeah, she got cold. But your shirt says fresh ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> Initially, we thought, you know, because of what she'd gone through, we thought of not having any more children. The fear is that whether or not it really happened to our second child or, or the third. So that's one of the consideration. But with uh, siblings around, at least you know they can actually look after each other. I push you to the side. We did think of having more children, but there were fears. He was born hearing impaired, we think, because we still, until now, cannot be very sure if it was congenital. That means that he was born that way. So we are afraid that if we have other children, it might be the same. Okay, nice job. Excellent. So, Evelyn, what, what are some areas that you feel you like to work on, okay. that we, we can try to work on today? Yeah, I realised when I was teaching her, there's mm. a lot of uh, issue regarding change of rhythm. Like, mm. there's constant change from quaver to semi-quaver, right. then right hand semi-quaver. I brought my student to consult Dr. Ezra to hear her play a piece that she has just mastered. And I think with these classical pieces, it's, it's very conversational. Different people talking, it's like opera. To be able to convey that to the audience, that, is, that will make this piece come alive. I never see Azariah as a hearing impaired person, even between friends and musicians alike, because he just converses like a normal person. So we never had to use sign language. So we never thought of him as a hearing impaired person. 
I think because maybe he has this hearing impact, he could be more sensitive in other strengths like touches, emotions and thoughts and imagination. Hi, I'm Megan and I was wondering what it's like specifically when you play the piano with a hearing impairment. So, like, how do you feel and what goes through your head and stuff? Without hearing aids, I would hear about maybe 10 to 15 percent of what normal people can hear. Hearing impairment is certain frequencies you hear okay and certain frequencies you just totally don't hear. If I were to say water, right, you want to drink water and I couldn't hear the T, water. So I just say water. Water, right? So that is what hearing impairment is like. It's just huge chunks of consonants and stuff that's taken out of sentences. And if you just try them, taking them out, it, it doesn't make any sense, does it? But along the way, I'll be there are times where I'm just discouraged by certain things that I expect myself to do, or I used to be able to do, or people expect me to be able to do, and I'm not able to meet up with those expectations. I see you're listening to a jazz piece and we should be able to listen and tell what notes you're playing and replicate it on the piano but that becomes more and more challenging for me and when you're playing with another person you have to be impeccably with them you have to follow them perfectly especially in classical music and this requires very acute very fine sense of hearing which sometimes it was just beyond my ability to follow so there were other ways that I had to use to get around it. For example, my vision, to look at cues, to look at their body expression, to look at their breath. I think my hearing is going down gradually. As my hearing deteriorates, sometimes I, I realize that things that I used to be able to hear, now I'm not quite able to hear. I feel sad, but there are also things that actually I can do to kind of get around it. So I just try to focus on that. Just taking a look at your ear. Look at Mama. Mama and Papa. Let's see. Wow, I think your wound has healed very well. And did you manage to wash your hair? Yes? Hmm? Did you wash your hair? Hmm. I would say the recovery from after the surgery to today has been very smooth. He didn't even complain of pain except for once, the very first night after the operation. Xavier has always been a very reserved and shy boy. He doesn't tell us anything about his emotions. He tends to keep it to himself and you have to pry it out of him. Xavier, did you hear any sound? What does it sound like? Inside. Did you hear any sound? Not yet? Was there any... What sound was that like? Huh? What sound do you hear? Sound like what? Hmm? Sound like what? Any sound here or not? Did you hear anything? Xavier's condition has actually taught us to be more patient with him. It's a fine line, I guess. We do not want him to be too dependent on using that as an excuse that, you know, he can't do certain things. Yeah. The ear first, ear level. Mm -hmm. It's somewhere around here, adjacent to the head. Oh, okay. So, yeah, and... You just got to put it on and just continue colouring, okay? Huh? Just leave it on and continue colouring first, okay? Just leave the, the implant on first. Huh? Don't worry. Mm. Don't worry. It's okay. It's, it's something it's, new. Yeah. Sound, sound. It sounds... Is it too loud? Is it too loud? I think I give him a softer one to be comfortable. Yes. Yeah. It is so <laughs> Okay. Okay, okay. Initially, when patients are fit with a cochlear implant, they report this situation where the initial voices which come through sound like Donald Duck voices or Mickey Mouse voices or Darth Vader voices. 
This is simply because it sounds robotic to them. It's just something new. I was just hoping that he will get used to it fast. Because from what I understand is that with a cochlear implant, it's not like an immediate reaction that you get out of it. So just hoping that he'll get used to it because it's something new to him. Hmm? You're making the noise. I was feeling excited. Excited about the prospects the prospect of him having any sort of improvement to his hearing situation. So I was using, I guess, those things to help stay focused rather than be overwhelmed by the anxiety and the uncertainty of the surgery itself. Bye, Bobby. How are you going? Wow, look, the doors, the door, special doors just opened. Come. Yeah. Are you ready? Yeah. Removing the disease that has affected Dylan in his ear right now should not be a difficult exercise. We have the modalities to adequately visualise the disease and the microsurgical instruments to remove it safely without causing harm to Dylan. The difficult challenge would be to position the implant or the prosthesis that is aiming to reconnect that middle ear hearing bone system, meaning that the sound waves would then conduct normally. A difficulty arises because there is no special instruments or additional anchoring devices which allows this prosthesis to stay in place. These prostheses are microscopic. There is no additional glue nor additional screws which ensures that this particular device or prosthesis stays in place. And therefore, good placement of this prosthesis is vital. As the tissues scar or as they heal, the position of the eardrum may change and therefore it may finally affect that position of that prosthesis and therefore the efficiency of the sound conduction pathway. So that, to me, would be technically the most difficult challenge in achieving a great outcome for Dylan. <laughs>